Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, another interview with Mr Nathan Bassett for Open House. How are you, Nathan? Yeah, not too bad, thanks. Can I start by just commending you on a sensational 2010 Millwood Football Club. Very, very lucky to have you, my man, on two areas. One is obviously your football and your football knowledge, but also your leadership and what you brought mm -hmm. to the club in that area. The thing that really impressed me, Nathan, was your um, calmness and your consistency and even how you handled it. A really, I guess, disappointing day for the club, losing a grand final by a goal, and the way the team, the club, etc., responded after that. Can you just talk me through straight after the final siren? Obviously, devastation. How did you? What did you say to the boys, and how did you pick it up afterwards? Yeah, well, obviously, there's there's that immediate disappointment of uh, such a close loss. But uh, you know, I was so proud of the playing group, the way they went about their footy uh, for the year, and. Um, you know, we had some circumstances, you know, on the day, losing a couple of players with injury, but, you know, we also made some mistakes, and, um, but we made them all year, and, and that's, that's footy. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, really now it's setting ourselves again, how we're going to keep getting better, um, how we're going to continue to improve, um, but also just the respect for myself that, that I think the playing group um, earned and deserved for, you know, a really important year for our footy club. And, and more importantly, the start now of uh, you know a rebuild. I shouldn't say rebuilding phase, but in some ways it is. You know, this is, has to be considered a starting point, not a finish. Um, this year we've started something. Next year we continue to grow it. What did you actually say to the boys straight after the game? So I saw you got them together. What were your first the, words to them on the field? Yeah, on the field. Um, I honestly can't remember, but I, yeah. I would have. I've, I know it would have been about you know just. Pride, I guess, in, in, in the way they performed and the way they went about their footies. So, um, you know, I, it was so close. We're, a game's decided by one scoring shot. Yeah. Uh, little things can make a little difference, um, yeah. you know, a massive difference. So, uh, yeah, it was just well done to the guys and, and the way they went about it. Um, and that was about it. Nathan, just the camera was on you a lot through the finals mm -hmm. uh, in the coach's box. You were so cool. Like you see other coaches screaming, throwing phones, whatever. Mm. What actually is going through your head while that game's going out there? And some of these games you're getting flogged early a couple of times. Yeah. Central's first game, and you know, it just but you just remain really calm. What, what are you thinking? Uh, maybe I'm calm externally, so yeah. that's a good thing. Uh, and I think it's important. I'm I'm a coach. I'm you know I don't need the emotion um, to make me do something physical. You know, I'm not out there to make tackles or. Uh, do something that takes something a little bit different. As a footballer, I needed that emotion. Um, I needed the emotion to, you know, go back into packs or make tackles or do something that I'm not going to do every day in my life. Um, as a coach, I don't need that. I need to be reasonably clear in my thinking um, so that I can make decisions that help our guys um, win the game or improve. So, you know, this, we've, we go into each week you know, with some basic rotations in mind as to what we might do in certain certain circumstances. So, the better prepared we are um, going into the game, then you know I think it enables you to remain calm on game day. Nathan, uh, two weeks ago, I think the Granny was. Mm -hmm. um, what have you been doing for the last couple of weeks, and what are we doing moving forward to 2011? Yeah, well, we um, start reviewing the players um, and our playing list pretty quickly, and, and doing the reviews with the players. So, that's. Uh, in process right now, um, and then it's you know where where our shortcomings on our list because we're going to lose a few players. We've uh, you know lost Simon Phillips in the draft, and uh, we'll lose a few more we think. Um, so what are the probably the immediate people that we think can help us make us better, mm. and um, and then yeah preparing again for pre-season. Spending a little bit of time at your club towards the end of last, uh, towards the end of the season, it just seemed to be a real rejuvenation, both co sort of in the commercial world as yeah. well as the on-field. How, how do you feel? Do you feel that? Yeah, I do, and it, yeah. it's um, that's one of the, the nice things about working in the SNFL is uh, you can cover lots of different parts of uh, business yeah. in some ways because uh, you know we're not a big business in the in the SNFL in, in that you know we're less than two million dollars as eight or nine people that work in the office, it's not a lot. Um, but we think we can really grow our business a bit. We've, we've given a platform now where people want to get back involved yeah. and, uh, and they want to come out and support Nord. So, you know, I'd love to see our membership grow. Um, I'd love to see us become more financially, I guess, stable, but even, you know, prosperous. And uh, I want to be involved in that. Beautiful. Um, 
The leadership, you've done a lot of leadership work. You did a little bit of leading teams, mm -hmm. I reckon, prior to taking on this gig, and you might still be doing some. How has that assisted and helped in what you've done at the Nord Football Club? Is the leadership, you know, just, just the little bit of work you've done with other organisations, yeah. you've gone, right, I'm going to take that, that, and that, and put yeah. it here. Has there been a bit of that? I think it helps you recognise good leaders mm. in your business or in, in my footy club, and, uh, and you also get to encourage those guys to take on leadership responsibilities. So... Uh, and I think you can start to see that in, in footy games when the guys start to stand up and work together as a group um, late in games. And I think you know, in, in last quarters this year, we've done pretty well uh, throughout the year. And it's not a fitness thing, or it's you know, it's it's really a understanding of this is what we do well, um, and then guys actually standing up and doing it. So um, you know, we talk about. You know, Craig always used to say to me, say to the playing group, leadership is action. And I go, what the hell does that mean? But um, <laughs> just, he thinks yeah, he's and, uh, you know, I just tell you, to say, oh, okay, well, you've got to do something. You know, like it means just do something. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, and if just do something, you know, your players might say that to each other on the field. Well, if they know what something is, then um, you know that makes it a lot easier. It's really interesting to see a few of the young guys stand up. You know, there's a couple of your 19 and 20 year olds out on the ground directing and having the confidence to do that. Um, yeah, and I think you have to be really clear with your communication uh, throughout the pre-season and, and throughout the season so mm -hmm. that guys know what right and wrong is. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I think we've got a good, you know, good, really good age group there of 20 year olds where, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've come through together and uh, they're really committed footballers and, and they want to play SNFL football and, uh, you know, their contribution's been excellent. Um, you know, probably had four or five that, you know, made a real impact at senior le level this year, which was mm. great for us. Just a really interesting point, because I do want to get on to the diabetes side mm -hmm. of life, which you do a lot of work with as well, mm. but um, a few of the lads that are playing Nord really want to play for Nord and their mm. ambitions to play at AFL are secondary. I'm sure they'd yeah. take it if it was there. Yeah. But it's just fantastic to see they want to pull on that Guernsey again. You're starting to lose that a little bit at AFL level? Yeah, well, it's... Um, yeah, for our guys, they, they give up so much to, to play SNFL football and mm. probably people think they get paid quite well, but most of our younger players are on you know, $250 a week. Yeah. If they're playing senior footy, if they play reserves, they get paid 50 bucks. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, it's a big commitment. They, last year they started on November the 9th. Um, we finished on October the 4th. Mm. So it's nearly 11 months of commitment. Some of those guys are doing six to seven sessions a week, um, plus they're living their normal life. So you know, it's a massive commitment for those guys uh, for little financial reward, comparable to what they'd get playing amateur footy. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I I have to respect um, what they give up to play with us, so I try and do the best job I can um, for them because um, you know they deserve it. Yeah, doing well. Diabetes, mate. Uh, a lot of people possibly wouldn't even know that you you're a diabetic yourself. Mm -hmm. um, fairly big challenge to overcome and to play at the elite level. Uh, one mindset to overcome that sort of thing, and secondly, what's your involvement with that uh, particular? <laughs> Industry, I guess, yeah. as, it, as it stands. Uh, well, I, I try and help, and, and um, when I was first diagnosed, I, I probably I pretty much ignored it. You know, I was diagnosed in 1997 um, when I was at Melbourne. Um, I'd just coming off a broken sternum, mm. and uh, you know, I lost a lot of weight. Lost 12 kilos in a week and a half. Um, I had the u usual symptoms, going to the bathroom a lot, and um, you know, it was a pretty big shock for me um, to be told four injections a day for the rest of your life, got to test your blood sugars regularly and you know as a young man I, it took me a while to come to terms with it and didn't want to talk about it, didn't like to talk about uh, I guess things that were the, that important uh, to me um, but probably you know soon after I came back to the Crows, probably looking about 99, 2000, you know, I got the opportunity to start to talk about it in schools and then it was I saw it as an opportunity to uh, just be an example for other diabetics that they can do um, something that you know can be pit pitched as too hard, mm. and um, and that kept me going in some ways because I had some tough times during my AFL career with diabetes, and um, you know there's probably some times where I thought about giving up, yeah. and uh, I thought well if I give up, I'm giving up on a lot of other diabetics as well. Yeah. So um, you know persisted and I ended up coming up with a pretty good routine um, by the time that I, you know, my last four or five years of my AFL career and, uh, you know, I've worked in, you know, I've 
done the rod for the Q over the last five years for Jade RF. I think with the team that I've had, we've probably raised around $100,000 in that time. Fantastic. Um, I'm an ambassador for Diabetes Counselling Online, yeah. and I think that's a really important service because it's for people that maybe are too embarrassed or not quite sure um, about diabetes, or even for brothers or relatives or sisters. Um, you know, they can ask questions and, and they get some good answers um, back. Um, can you remember the phone number for that? Diabetes Counselling Online. It's yeah. actually a web. It's a uh, website. So, right uh, www.diabeteschounsellingonline.com.au. Beautifully done. So, Check that out. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you yeah. made a nice donation for them. Yeah, I'm going to do. Good some work, Greg. Yeah. Um, so, and you know, also done help out Diabetes SA when I get the chance because yeah. um, you know there's a lot of type two diabetics out there, and um, you know I've had some really good education on on food and you know what's good to for intake and uh, you know for a different generation above me they've had maybe not that same good information mm -hmm. so um, you know it can help for, to know for them you know what's good for them to eat and what isn't. Yeah it's fascinating, my little nephew's a diabetic, I think we've had this mm. discussion before and for him to see that somebody can actually go out there and still play at AFL level and all that is amazingly important mm. so it's brilliant you kept going when things got really <laughs> tough Nathan. All the very best for 2012, mate. You've done a remarkable job. You're a really good fellow, mate. We really sincerely wish you all the very best, both with you know, your outside work, but also uh, the work you're doing with the Nord Footy Club. Thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Cheers, good man. man. Good man.